Hey, it's D. It's a brand new episode coming right for you, right on the FTO Network. Enjoy. All right, we are back with a brand new episode. Sorry it took me a little bit, day or two longer than I thought it would, but we're here, we're doing this, let's get on it. <clears throat> you know, I want to do this a little bit out of order than I thought I was going to do, because there's some news that just dropped that like, I'm really excited to talk about, like Kingdom Hearts 4 has been announced, and we have a trailer for it. Whoo! It looks very traditional to every other Square Enix game that's out there. Like, so it's very Final Fantasy, more so than it is uh, <clears throat> Kingdom Hearts. You still see the Keyblade. At the very end, you still see Goofy and Donald at the, like, doing their thing at the end of the, of the trailer. But yeah, I am 100% pumped. 100% pumped for this. Kingdom Hearts 4, I haven't played 3 yet. Because I don't have a console to play it, but, like, regardless. Like, this game looks incredible. Sora looks like, you know, like a boy band singer. He definitely still has, like, the same Sora hairstyle. But, like, man, I gotta tell you, I'm pumped. Like, 110. 110 pumped for that. This is so cool. Also, uh, I want to talk about that's that's really new type news. Is uh, HBO is developing an Aquaman origin story. Um... You brought me the ocean, and Charlie Theron is going to be producing it. <clears throat> I I'm a part of a a few uh, black centric blurred groups, and like the homophobia is still real in certain parts of like the black and blurred community, and it's really annoying to see it. Uh, needless to say, like a lot of folks are not excited about this. A lot of folks did not even read the article because they believe it's going to be like the same character from the Young Justice TV show that's going to be a part of this little limited series that's coming out. It's going to be like from the graphic, from like the, the comic book, the comic book, uh, Calder. And it's going to be like him put into, you know, a little, a limited series on HBO Max. I'm excited to see how this is going to look. I'm pumped to see like how it's going to play out. Uh, I definitely think Calder is one of the one of the few characters that that has positive masculinity that's out there, and like it's like we rarely see it. And uh, it, it's really annoying to see like people like not like him or say like he's not masculine enough, like simply because he's bisexual. It's ridiculous. The whole thing's ridiculous. Like I'm excited for this. This is awesome. All right, let's get back into like, like the standard news that I had. Like then most of you may have seen on. My Instagram or Twitter or Vero. Speaking of which, make sure you check out Vero if you haven't checked it out already. Uh, V-R, V-E-R dot com or the app on <coughs> Apple and and Google. Just download it. It's a, it's an awesome social media platform. It's fun. The algorithm is made for you because there is none. Uh, there's no ads. It's very seamless. I'm a big fan. Uh, also, Spreaker is sponsoring this podcast, so you get like you get ads before you listen to me talk. Spreaker, they're part of iHeart, so you know there you go. But Gotham Knights has a new cast member joining, uh, and Alore joins this, so she's going to be a part of the pilot. I'm not sure how is she going to be a part of every episode. Maybe like if like they're going to do a test run with the pilot. See how fans like it. Bring it back if it's like you know what they want it to be. Uh, I want to see spoiler. I want to see Stephanie Brown a part of any iteration of uh, DC shows, but I don't. I'm not really excited to see spoiler. Like I, 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 I know it's gonna be hard to get like Dick, Jason, Damian, uh, Duke, and even Cassandra a part of like you know any kind of TV show, property wise, but. That's what I was expecting. This definitely has like a, a multiverse Elseworld kind of feel to it with this, with this show. Is uh, Bruce's son, who isn't Damien, or any of the other Robins or Bat Boys. It's uh, a different character's name, and we're gonna see like uh, how that how that plays out. Because uh, Bruce is dead in the show, and this Robin is pretty much taking over and doing his thing in accordance of that character. So. Like it looks interesting on paper, but again, like I would much rather have like, have me some, some. <sighs> I, I would much rather have like, like a traditional story from the comics, but you know, anything that that's good, it's good. It's gonna be in CW, so it can be kind of like you know hit or miss. 
You will see. Uh, also, Leslie Grace, uh, the star of Batgirl, announcing that the film is finally wrapped. So, you know, we got to do editing. Got to do some CGI. Got to do some promotion. Hopefully get a trailer pretty soon. All that. I'm here for it. Like, it's Batgirl and she's black. Like, yeah. 110, yes. Check, check, check. All the marks. I'm here for I'm so here for it. Hope they add, like, characters. Like, I know Firefly is the main main antagonist of this show, or this movie, but uh, I hope they add, like, characters like Static Shock. Like, I know, like, uh, Milestone have, like, a certain type of contract with DC, like, where they don't use their characters very often in their properties. But it would, it would be nice to see, like, Static Shock or Rocket or even Bumblebee in a movie like this. Like, if, if not the first, then maybe the sequel, if it does well. And I hope it does do well. I do think, like, with the popularity of uh, Kravitz doing her thing, like, you know, regardless of what she said about Will Smith and the slap, uh, it is, like, it is nice seeing, like, like, black representation in DC Universe, and hopefully, like, like, the steam will carry on from that and translate itself to this, because I'm pumped. I'm really, I'm really excited for this. I know, like, uh, I keep giving check marks all the DC stuff right now, but, uh, DC is trying. If you guys uh, don't know about your nerd... Like you have listened to it in my podcast with me and Yo Nerd talking about comic books. He is a big proprietor of DC doing their thing when it comes to like the, to diversity and like putting like in black and brown characters on the spotlight because they are really are trying to do that. Marvel did their thing a couple of years ago, like putting black and brown characters and LGBTQ characters on front. DC is doing their same thing also, but like that they're also giving them films on top of it and TV shows. Like I'm I'm excited. I really am. Like this is this is like a good moment to be a person of color. And, like, to see yourself represented, like, like this. Like, it, it really is a good feeling. So, like, I can't wait to see this trailer. Hopefully, I'll get it in, like, two or three months. It'll drop. Uh, I think Fandom going to be doing a thing, like, in June or July. So, even better. Even better. Next up, uh, DC Stargirl cast Tim Gabriel as Green Lantern's son, Alan Scott, uh, Obsidian for season three. Obsidian is the Master of Shadows, essentially. And... I think it's a good place to put Obsidian. Obsidian, I feel like Stargirl is like ju- Justice Society of America light. It's like whatever, whatever Justice Society was supposed to, to turn into, like in the DC Comics. This is what Stargirl. Stargirl is picking up that baton and running it with a Justice Society type thing. And like, of course, that's pretty obvious. We have like Wildcat and uh, Doctor Midnight and like Adam Smasher and all those other characters attached to this. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah, of course, it would be, like, a Justice Society uh, 2.0. But I feel like, like they're doing something a little bit different with uh, with this show that's, um, that we didn't really get to see in Justice Society, like, comic book-wise. And it is it has that same kind of family feel for Justice Society, because that's what just the Justice Society really is. It's, like, is DC's answer to the Fantastic Four. At least that's, what, that's how I see it. And, like, it's putting, like, a modern feel to it. Like, you know, all the wayward kids out there in the world who who grew up in the late 2000s or the 2010s. And, like, they're trying to find their place. I feel like Stargirl is that place where they can they can sit down, see themselves, uh, put themselves into, like, these positions and situations. And, like, they really understand a little bit more about themselves and, like, the culture they're surrounding themselves in with Stargirl. Like, I, I'm a real big proprietor. So, like, having, like, so having Tim Gabriel and, like, seeing Obsidian... On a TV show like this, I think it's a good call. Like, I really do. Uh, Umbrella Academy. Elliot Page reveals character's new name, which is Victor, uh, ahead of season three. So we get Victor. Uh, it's like a Kilgraf? Kilgrove? Kilgrave, I think it is. Kilgrove? I forget the last name of these characters of the Umbrella Academy. I kind of fell off around season two. But Elliot Page is, uh, this is sensational. To, to have, like, someone transition over into, like, their new gender. And instead of, like, you know, being terminated from whatever uh, film production they're a part of, like, the, the the company adjusts themselves to this person transition. That is fantastic. There, there's nothing better than, like, like, knowing that a company has your back like this and, like, supports you 110%. This is great. Like, uh, kudos to you, Elliot. Like, I can't wait to see what your character looks like. I know me and my daughter, we were watching this show. Uh, we got to get back on it, along with Stargirl. But, uh, yeah, this is cool. This is cool like, to see, like, that Victor is going to be a part of the show. And, like, it, they're going to be worked into, like, the character. That's that's impressive. 
That's new, man. Like, uh, we saw that, we saw something similar to that with the Orange New Black, in a way, with Laverne Cox, but, like, this is, this is definitely, like, a, a whole new take on, uh, being, like, aware of trans people, and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely 110% here for it. No, no negative for me today so far. This is, this may change with this story, though, with this new story. Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus, uh, Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson to reteam with Jason Bateman uh, to direct a TV show called Project Artemis on Apple. Uh, you know what? I, I put TV on here, but I think it's a movie. I think it's a movie. I don't think it's a TV show. It, but it's called Project Project Artemis. There's no details about what this is going to be. Like, we just, we just, we don't know. We just don't. But uh, it's going to be coming out. Uh, I think I think they said 20, 2023 it's coming out. But it's, it, I think it's going to be like a dramedy. That's what I'm also thinking. But a Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson. Uh, I'm kind of moving past Colin Scarlett Johansson and Tree Lady. She's apologized for like those super remarks and like, you know, been trying like, to, to, to fix the ridiculousness that she said about her being able to play any role because she's an actor. So, you know, something you got to forgive and forget. But sometimes you can still bring that shit back up. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, <clears throat> not really bad news. Really? Not really. Like, I think it's, it's going to be fun to see how this goes down. Like, uh, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. HBO Max got some craziness going on with Pennywise. They're really trying to bank on this side, uh, this franchise, this Pennywise It franchise. Because, you know, it's really hard to do that with a character that, like, that you kill off, spoiler alert, in, like, you know, their last movie. But uh, the draw is Pennywise. Like, the the killer clown from outer space. Like, that, that is the draw for this. I would say, like, you know, like, say that Pennywise had a child and put that character in, like, somewhere else, make it be just as maniacal as Pennywise. It can be asexual. It's an alien. It can be whatever you want it to be. Like, you reproduce a- asexually. Like, boom. Like, that's a, that's a spinoff. But uh, the story is uh, a prequel series, Welcome to Derry, in development for HBO Max. So, n- knowing what we know about this show, that Pennywise dies, um, like, essentially around our time, like, if we're going to be going, like, movie-based, like, new 2020 new movie-based story arc of this here, Pennywise dies, like, in, in essentially our time. So, having Pennywise die in our time, and, like, having that happen, and then, like, going to the past and see, like, like the exploits of Pennywise, like, we know Pennywise took a break. We don't know why Pennywise took a break. So, there could be a whole group of kids out there, like, who... Or trying to stop Pennywise, but you know, essentially fail. But like you, like you know, could be a rotation of actors, multiple people coming and going, different different time periods of Pennywise. Like in after after he crashed on Earth, you know, some, something to think about. I I'm really interested to see like how they they go about uh, this story. Uh, how much of um, if they're gonna tie in um, the gunslinger. To this, because that would be cool. Hey, like Idris Elba can come back and do Roland. I mean, like, if it, if we're going like multiverse with this, like if I can get over myself with like with the casting of uh, the Gunslinger, which I, I shouldn't be too angry about because it's all fiction essentially. But like Roland saw himself as white because he was reminded that he was white all the time. But that, that's besides the point. If we like, if we can like accept that Idris Elba like, did a thing with the Gunslinger film and. Like, have that character come back as Roland in this series. Or, like, you know, get yourself a new Roland. Make Roland Asian this time. Who gives a shit? Like, it's it's fiction. So, like, get get Roland to come back and put him inside this series. And, like, and tie some of the, the Gunslinger universe. Tie in some of the, the other, like, books that Stephen King has. And put, like, a whole, like, uh, a Kingverse out there on HBO Max. I do think HBO Max is trying to do a lot more. Uh, they talked about before HBO Max that came out that they wanted to put out more quantity, as I say, opposed to quality work, and they kept their word to that definitely. But uh, man, I guess we'll see like how all this looks because like this is exciting news, and they they do have to compete with Disney because Disney is doing like their their period piece with Predator. Putting Predator in the past, I think like it was 1918. We talked about it in the previous episode, but uh, so they got they got to keep up with like with the characters of nostalgia being put into the past, 
and seeing how they interact with characters back then. So they got to keep in pace with those guys, and they are. And with Discovery Plus or Discovery buying Warner, like you know, we gotta we gotta see how this is gonna look. Um, I, I think we gotta check this out. I'm not 100 percent like sure like how well it's gonna be. Like horror is a is a tough bag to write sometimes. It is, and like in keeping your audience involved in horror, it can become kind of trite at times. I saw this person do a TikTok video talking about vampires, and like they called a lot of points, like how like some person who you thought you know died turns out to be an actual vampire, how like some character that you don't suspect to be a vampire like is actually a vampire, like how some characters uh, are very vampire stereotypes, like it's. It's a whole, like, running gag when it comes to... Like, we talk about, like, tropes in drama and comedy. they are tropes with vampires. they are tropes in horror. And I, I don't want to see that happen with a show like this. Like, I wouldn't say I respect Pennywise, but, like, like what Stephen King tried to do with the character and, like, and do, like, with the cast of, like, uh, of the 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 character that we're... are the protagonists. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see, like, how they're going to make Pennywise the focal point of this... But, like, also, like, I guess he's going to be the draw, but the kid's going to be the focal point because it has to be the kids. It's always the kids, right? So, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Maybe they, they, they got monster haunters. I don't know. It could be a whole thing. It could be, like, more, like, it like been Pennywise, like, came in with other characters. We don't know. Who knows? We'll see. The Witcher Season 3 has started filming. Yeah. Season 3. I haven't finished Season 2. I know a lot of you are saying to yourselves, hey, weren't you doing episodes? Where you were watching every episode and like you know letting us listen to you as you watch the show, which you guys like, by the way. I didn't think like people were, like would would react to that the way they did. But, like like a lot of you guys listen to that podcast when it comes out. I'm not sure if, like if it's a uh, misrepresentation on my part or what, but uh, it is. It's a thing. So <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm gonna keep on doing it. I'm going through a moving situation, like trying to move myself out of my home into somewhere else new, and like the stress. It's just overwhelming at times, like, to get myself, like, set up every single time, like, and my, my kids want to jump all over me as I'm doing the podcast, the sleeping schedules and disarray currently. Uh, again, the stress is definitely, like, a big factor in all this, but I do want to watch, I want to binge every episode, like, binge, like, three episodes a day, have them all, like, saved, post them out every week, like, so you guys can hear it, and maybe get myself ready for the third season. I don't know. We'll see. But, like, that's that's the goal. But season three is, is filming right now. I mean, they got the script already. It means, like, the, the cast is, like, ready to do their thing, and, like, the story is, like, it's a go. So, wow. That was fast. They must have been writing, like, when season two had dropped. They had to. Uh, some anime news. Attack on Titan season finale, part three, will finish in 2023. So, there was a big thing about, like, the season finale being a series finale, but apparently they're keeping it going, which is good for me, because I get to go watch it in English. I can't watch. This show is so dense, I cannot watch in Japanese. Like, I, I would have to be reading the subtitles, taking it all in, and trying to understand the story at the same time. And, like, I can do a lot of things at one time, but, like, at my current state right now, I can't handle that. Like, I, no. <laughs> I can barely watch, like, Discovery on a regular basis. Like, no. We gotta, we gotta pace ourselves. Pace ourselves. <laughs> so... 2023 is when it's going to finish, supposedly. I'll see a lot of fans talking online. They're like, you know what? This is going to keep on going. It's, they're not going to cancel. Like, this is a big money maker for them. They're not going to just cancel Attack on Titan. Like, the story's too good. Those Titans aren't going anywhere. Like, you know, it's a whole thing. Like, yeah. I think fan, fans are saying, like, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, the People read the manga, so they're like, yeah, like, they're going to keep it going. So, like, you know, Bleach is coming back. So, nothing stays dead forever. But we got Boruto. Boruto is point. That nothing says that forever. So, yeah, I think Inuyasha came back, too. So, yeah. Uh, Strange New World has a trailer that dropped. If you guys haven't seen it, I posted it on FTO, on my social media. I need to start posting stuff on my website. That might be a good idea. But uh, the new trailer has dropped. It looks fucking looks so damn good. It has, like, the feel of, like, the original Star Trek. But I wouldn't even say, like, like it's updated. It just looks pretty. It just looks really nice. Like, it still has, like, that same feel of the original Star Trek. It just looks nice. It doesn't look as clunky and bulky as it did, like, you know, back in the 60s. It looks like, you know, very, uh, very nice filters, cool lenses, cameras are awesome. The set is, like, posh. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Speaking of Star Trek, uh, Star Trek The, the Strange New World uh, trailer features uh, Celia Rose Gooding as young Nayota Ahura. And her hair is on point. That is like my big takeaway of like this whole thing. Her hair. Ahura has like a, a, a low cut hair. And whoo. Boy, I tell you, this uh, this crew, this Pike crew, like the story is that Pike knows that he, how he's gonna die because it was shown to him in Discovery. If you guys watch Star Trek Discovery, we see Pike and like we see like he sees how he ends up uh, getting injured, like in like the way he gets injured is like it's also shown to us like in a pilot, not a pilot, but the second episode of I think it was the second episode of Star Trek. It was one of the episodes of Star Trek. Like, we get to see Pike come back and, he, like, he's burned. And, like, that's one of like, the big revelations of Pike and Spock and, like, the entire crew of the Enterprise before Kirk shows up, who's also going to be in the show. I don't know how they're going to work that out. That's going to be interesting. Maybe, like, like, uh, like it's relived memories of, like, a Pike's Avengers. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's going to be interesting, though. But, uh, yeah, dude, uh, Gooding is going to be Ahura. <sighs> this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it drops in May. May 5th. That's my wife's birthday. I should probably remember that. It re- it's renewed for a second season already. What? Is that good? Oh, yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. For Season one hasn't even dropped. It's already renewed for a second season. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Speaking of second season, and just like that, uh, the Sex and City sequel, it's renewed for a second season. See what I'm talking about? Things coming back? Like, Bleach came back, Naruto came back, and Yasha came back, and Sex and the City came back. And just like that, it's just like that. I watched maybe two episodes of this. Uh, it, it seems very progressive, in a sense. Uh, it is... It is difficult to watch it without Kim Cattrall. Like, I can't... I can't... I can't stress that enough. Like, I, I do believe that, like, not having control is, like, a, a breath of fresh air to, like, this entire franchise, but not having her a part of it seems off. Like, I'm thinking tacky, but, like, like that can't be, that's not the word I want to, like, it, has, it feels a bit off not seeing control a part of the show. Because, like, like, if you guys watched the show, like I did, like, you watched it almost religiously, and control was a big draw for the show. Like, she was... She was entertaining. She was charismatic. She was like on point with her lines. Like when her character felt stuff, like you kind of felt it for her. Also, like, she was very sympathetic, and she's like like the rock of the show too. Like she was very stable for all the characters. Like she was the 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 den mother in a way. Yeah, but yeah, season two is renewed. Hopefully, like you know, we can see uh, a patchwork with the cast and control. But I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. So yeah. It's whatever. But, you know, it's, it's interesting, regardless. Regardless. Uh, Star Trek Picard as the Next Generation cast for season three. This is the final season, too. That is that is the kick for me. Like, I'm liking Picard. Hopefully we get, like, a spinoff of this Picard show. Like, hopefully. Maybe, like, get a Picard, like, in a younger body. And, like, have him do some exploits with this crew. Make him still an admiral? <sighs> like, I really like Picard. Like, uh, I know, like, I haven't watched, like, this this recent episode, because you guys haven't seen me do a video on it, and I haven't watched it. No, I ain't gonna lie to you. I haven't watched it. But, um, this is, like, this is a really good show. It's nice seeing, like, like, come back to our time. Like, maybe, I think it's 2024, so two years. Uh, two years, like, before this. After this. It's interesting to see how it is. No, it looks. I would put like more economists and political theories into the show, like uh, have like like elections being won and have like you know critical race theory everywhere. But like, that's not that's not the show. The show is like like them going on a mission and fulfilling that mission. That's the show. But that's an opportunity. Maybe, maybe they will. Maybe they, they do touch on things like that. Soong is, like, the big outlier in the show for me because I don't understand, like, you know, his relevance in this. And, like, uh, it can't be, like, the Soong that we know that we saw in Enterprise because he had to be, like, what, over, like, f- like 200 years old in Enterprise? 
And if that's the same student like from Enterprise, who the hell's the student that's in the next generation? So like, is he cloning himself? Like, what the hell's going on with Soon? I don't know. It has to be something. Because as much as I like the character Soon, I mean, there's something going on here that I don't really know about. But uh, I think that's it. There's a lot of shows. Tokyo Vice, uh, the sixth season of Better Call Saul is coming out. Ambulance. I think it's a Michael Bay film. Um, Audio Nice. I think that's on Hulu. Let's see what Hulu or Prime. Uh, the Invisible Pilot, a couple of comic books out there, Batman Beyond, your Neo Year, Issue 1, Spider-Punk, uh, X-Men Red 1, like you just see Magneto back in his red costume, like it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, man, It's a lot of stuff, and I think I touched on all of it. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, the date of me recording this is April 12th, yes, April 12th on a Tuesday. This has been D of FTL Nerd Talk. Uh, I love you all. If you want more of FTL content, let me know. Uh, I may be asking for a a guest host to go to host like a second show that's going to be weekly, along with this, because I I got to get more content out there for podcasts. If like podcasts are my big draw for everybody, I got to be doing like something on a regular with the podcast. Like I got to Hard Talks is hopefully coming back soon. I'm talking with Eric about getting that taken care of. Uh, make sure you check out FTN Nerd Talk. Wherever you find FTN Nerd Talk, like you think of all the platform that has like social media, more than likely FTN Nerd Talk is a part of it. So, and with all that said, enjoy your night, enjoy your day, be well, uh, try to be kind to everyone else. I know it's hard in this world to do that, but you know, if you're kind to yourself, try to be kind to others. Until then, take it easy. Hey guys, D here of FTL Nerd Talk. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends about FTL Nerd Talk. Got a lot of different shows for all of you. Make sure you tune in every week for a brand new episode. Take it easy.